Okay, so Apple has literally just finished their March 2018 event and they've announced some very interesting and also unexpected stuff. This was a very unexpected event from uh, every single point of view, basically. But yeah, grab some popcorn and here's everything that Apple has announced today at the event and everything you need to know about all of those interesting announcements. So yeah, enjoy. Okay, so this entire March 2018 event was not only announced quite unexpectedly about a week ago, but it was mainly focused on education. So at the beginning of the event, Tim Cook, he walked on the stage and he talked about the Swift Playgrounds app for the iPad. Now, in case you don't know what this thing is, it's an app that basically lets you learn how to code in Swift, how to program in Swift, which you would need if you want to develop an iOS app, for example. Uh, so if you have an iPad, definitely get the app. It's free. You don't have to pay for the app, anything. It's free. Uh, and it might even get you a job as a developer. I'm not even joking. It's it's literally that good. Definitely try it if you have an iPad. And then Tim continued talking about the iPad, uh, about how students in class are much more successful when they're working off an iPad, because not only do they get 200,000 apps, educational apps, but they also get so much more possibility than just you know writing on a single piece of paper uh, with an actual tablet. And basically just after this, Apple has announced the first new product for 2018, and that's this brand new iPad, this new 2018 iPad, but no, this is not the iPad Pro 3, at least not yet. This is the entry-level iPad that I was talking about in my Lisa Rumors episodes. This is this is basically the cheap cheapest iPad that you can buy. So this thing basically looks again like an iPad Air 1. So we have pretty much the same design as before, as last year, and we still have those really thick bezels on the sides and on the top and on the bottom. We have the Touch ID sensor on the front, we have the camera on the back and the front. So yes, this thing comes with a back-facing camera, pretty much exactly the same thing as the 2017 iPad that I reviewed a year ago. However, the biggest change to this iPad is actually Apple Pencil support. So this iPad supports the Apple Pencil, which, which is strange, really, really strange. Uh, because, you know, it's it's not an iPad Pro, it's just a regular iPad, but this is huge for education. And by the way, this thing supports the exact same pressure levels and input latency as on the larger iPad Pro. Not a 10.5 inches iPad Pro, and I'll get to that in a second, but the 9.7 inches iPad Pro that came out in uh, 2016. Right after that, Apple has announced new versions of iWork, so essentially Pages, Numbers, and Keynote that support the Apple Pencil. But wait, Daniel, they already supported the Apple Pencil. Well, yes, but it, it kind of worked like a mouse as as the finger, essentially. Uh, but now they support annotations and they work really, really well in class. So you can basically draw with the Apple Pencil on a presentation, on a keynote or basically PowerPoint presentation, if you wish, you can do that. And then something else that's quite big is the iBooks app. So uh, the iBooks author app is coming to the iPad as well. So essentially now you can write books on the actual iPad, books for the iBooks store, which you can then sell, which is quite big. This wasn't possible on the iPad before. And then you can also use, which I've mentioned before, the Swift Playgrounds app to actually develop apps right on the iPad. So you can develop apps and write books, both of which you can sell in the App Store on the iPad, which is which is huge. Actually, in Swift Playgrounds, you still need to use Xcode for a few things on a Mac, but that's for a different video. But yeah, besides this, uh, this new iPad comes with the Apple A10 Fusion chip, not the A10X. So that's in terms of the processor. We don't really know what, uh, what's the amount of RAM in this iPad, probably just two gigabytes like we had on the iPhone 7. It comes with an eight megapixel camera with 1080p video recording. So it's not the iPhone 6S's camera, but the iPhone 6's camera. So pretty much the exact same camera as we had last year with a 2017 entry-level iPad, which again, it couldn't do 4K video either. And then the, the big question is, what about the display on this brand new iPad? Is it a 120 Hz refresh rate panel? Probably not. As far as I can tell, no, this is just a standard 60 Hz refresh rate as we've had on uh, the 9.7 inches iPad Pro from 2016. So unfortunately, this means that with the Apple Pencil, the fluidity is going to be much greater on an iPad Pro 10.5 inches than on this iPad or the 2016 iPad Pro. So what about if it supports the Apple Pencil? What about the Apple Smart Keyboard? No, it doesn't support it. It doesn't have the smart connector on either side of the side bed, which means that you cannot really connect the smart keyboard, which really, really sucks. I mean, for students, it makes a lot of sense for this to support a keyboard so that you can, you know, actually type. But as far as I can tell from the Apple event images, this is actually focused towards uh, more towards students that are in a probably middle grade. So between, I don't know, maybe seven to 13, 12, 13 years max. So basically students who don't really have to do that much typing, they just need to draw a few things, schematics, and maybe just write a few notes and so on. So that's why this thing doesn't support a keyboard. That would be my guess. Now, if you want to connect a Bluetooth keyboard, you can still do that. You can buy a separate keyboard and attach it to this, to this iPad. So you can do that. However, having a smart connector means that you can get 
get one of those Apple keyboards, which don't really require pairing or even energy. It takes all uh, the energy from the iPad, so it doesn't, you don't have to charge it. And it's obviously much more convenient and also really, really thin. So fortunately, this thing doesn't support the Apple Smart Keyboard. But again, you can still buy a Bluetooth keyboard in case you really need that. And then Apple also talked a lot about AR, how this could be a very big thing for students on this iPad. Imagine just dissecting a frog on this actual iPad with a pencil and an AR rather than, you know, just killing a frog, basically. And it's not just about frogs, it's about how easy you can see things in 3D, uh, such as a dam, how it would affect uh, the water flow and so on. So that's really useful to have on such a device. Other than that, GarageBand is getting an update for more music support. And then you can also share an iPad in school which is really, really big. So essentially multiple students can have multiple accounts on the same iPad without having to log into iCloud, which is great. And then you also have this app called Classroom Manager on the Mac, so you can uh, administer basically all of your students for a teacher. This is this is obviously great. And then speaking of teachers, there's also an Apple Teachers app uh, where teachers can do training courses and they can even earn badges based on their progress, which I think is really, really cool. I'm just wondering where those courses, training courses would actually come from who would design those other teachers, I'm guessing. Other than that, the iCloud storage has been bumped to 200 gigabytes from five gigabytes, which was a joke, but that's still a joke because it's only for school. So it's not for the consumers. You still have, if you're a consumer, you still have five gigabytes and that's for everything. Keep in mind that Google offers you a limited storage for photos and videos, whereas Apple offers you five gigabytes for everything, photos, videos, backup, uh, backs, backups, uh, app data, pretty much everything. So. Yeah, 200 gigabytes for students only. And then interesting enough, Logitech has launched a Apple Pencil, kind of. It's called Logitech Crayon. It costs $50 and it works with the iPad as a third-party pencil, which is quite interesting. I'll be testing that in a separate video, so definitely subscribe if you want to see that compared to the Apple Pencil. I'm quite curious to see how good or how bad that thing is. Okay, so how much is this iPad going to cost? Well, it actually costs $329 for consumers and $300 for students. Such, such a big discount you know, $30, so, so awesome. And that's actually the, basically the same price as the year before, as 2017. By the way, that's 320 pounds in the UK. Somehow it's, you know, it's not a one-to-one -one conversion ratio in the UK, which is interesting because that's always been the case. But yeah, this is the price for this new iPad. I was pretty much on point in terms of what to expect with this new iPad in my leaks and rumors predictions from my previous episodes. Apart from the Apple Pencil support, I honestly wasn't expecting that to be included. Moving on, the second thing that Apple has announced at the event, apart from the software and the hardware, was also something that they haven't really announced, but it's available on Apple's website. You can now purchase individual Mac accessories, so a keyboard and a mouse and a trackpad in space gray. Pretty much the exact same accessories that an iMac Pro comes with, but now you can buy them individually. Keep in mind that some people sold those for like $500 on eBay, which is crazy, and now you can buy them for the same price as before. Not really, the keyboard is more expensive by I think it's $20, $30. But yeah, you can you can now buy those individually, and fortunately, the keyboard has to have uh, a numeric pad attached. So it's one of those long keyboards, you cannot get the standard short keyboard in, uh, in space gray, unfortunately. Okay, now besides those things, the third thing that Apple has announced at the event was pretty much the ending, that was that this was pretty much it. Apple has announced anything at this event, which was very, very strange. So this was a very interesting event, like I said at the beginning. They haven't even announced this event until uh, a week ago, which was strange. Apple usually announces uh, these events about a month or even more before the actual event happens. And then Apple hasn't even live streamed the actual event. Everything was pretty much uh, available by, by people who were there and took photos, like The Verge. These images came from The Verge, so huge thanks to The Verge for uh, having those images. But yeah, other than that, this was everything that Apple has announced today. So it was mostly uh, this new entry-level iPad and some new software for schools. So it was definitely an educational focus, uh, education focus event. Don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications if you want to see my unboxing and my first impressions of this brand new 2018 iPad. I've already ordered one, by the way, and it's coming in a few days. So yeah, definitely stay tuned for that. And let me know in the comments, what are, you, what are your thoughts on this brand new iPad, this new 2018 iPad, and what are your thoughts on using a tablet for education? Let me know in the comments. When I was uh, in high school and middle school, I used to carry around a lot of uh, heavy books, like really, really heavy books. I remember my backpack being, uh, I don't know, like eight to nine kilograms heavy. It was really, really heavy. So I could barely carry that thing to my school. So imagine uh, having all of those books and way, way, way more, pretty much any book in the world in a tablet that's thinner than your regular school book. That's that's insane. And also writing everything in the same book because you know you can you have an Apple pencil so now you can use that 
for uh, as a notebook as well. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think about this as using on using a tablet in in schools for education. But yeah, overall in terms of this event, I was a bit disappointed to be honest. I was really expecting the iPad Pro 3 to be announced. I've done a final examiner's video about the iPad Pro. So uh, even when it came to the release date, I mentioned that today's event is a strong possibility. If not, then probably June. It seems that June is probably going to be it for the new iPad Pro uh, third generation, the big iPad X redesign. So yeah, I was quite surprised not seeing that. And it doesn't really make sense for Apple to include a pencil uh, to make this Apple iPad pencil capable, which is a bit strange because then what's the point of having an iPad Pro, just the keyboard? I mean, that was the key selling feature of an iPad Pro. The pencil support, right, for uh, people, for artists, and then the keyboard. But this one can already do the pencil, and then you can kind of do the keyboard with a Bluetooth keyboard. So it's a pretty interesting uh, decision that Apple made. So this also means that every single future iPad coming from, from this model, every single one would also support a keyboard, sorry, the Apple Pencil, and maybe even the keyboard in the future. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think about all this, everything that I've mentioned in this video and the Apple event, and again, tablets for education. If you like, if you enjoyed it, let me know. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in my next one tomorrow's video, which should be quite interesting as always. But yeah, thank you for watching. I'm Daniel. See you guys in my next one. Ton of tech, signing out. Cheers.